In today's video, we're going to be learning about backstrap weaving, which is an ancient Mayan traditional way of making clothing. If you're in Shela, Guatemala, we definitely suggest coming out to Trauma Textile, supporting their cause, buy a couple of outfits for yourself and your family, and learn some ancient culture. Thanks for joining us on another journey. Today, we're in Guatemala. If you're new to the channel, this is April. Hola. And I'm Wayne. We do a video every Thursday. So hit that subscribe button and smash that bell. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey. Buenos dias, mi nombre es Oralia. Pues eh, soy la encargada aquí de la Asociación Trama Textiles. Yo soy de, de Sololá. Mi idioma maya es Cachiquel, pero que también hablo el quiche, ¿verdad? My name is Carrie. I'm from New York in the United States, and I've been working with Drama Textiles for the last 10 months. Drama Textiles is a cooperative of indigenous women across Guatemala. They all practice the ancient art of backstrap and weaving. They completely run the cooperative. They elect the president and vice president to help manage it. I'm the only non-Guatemalan employee. My main role is to connect them with the international community. And we have many lovely volunteers who also help us bridge the gap. I do like the Pinterest account. I've been helping with the newsletter. I did um, some blog posts for them as well. I'm Noren and I, I head for the website. Hello, I'm Lisa and I've been here only a few days now since <laughs> Thursday <laughs> and uh, I will uh, reorganize uh, the website because we have so many new stuff. I'm going to develop a new product line, Spot and Leaders mm -hmm. and yeah, help also with the orders. So this is 100% organic cotton. She soaks mm -hmm. it in uh, cold water for you can soak it overnight, you can, we just soaked it for a couple hours. So then she's dipping it in the natural dye mixture that she made using the flower of death in the hot water. How long do you make the natural dye material with the flowers in hot water? They will boil the mixture for about a half an hour to make sure all of the color gets out of the flowers. And then they will continue to dip the cotton thread into the mixture for up to three hours. Oh. So depending on how strong you want the color to be or how deep, when they're making a larger batch, they use the banana bark and they'll put it in the natural dye as well and boil it. So it will serve as a fixation agent. This is romero. That's rosemary. Rosemary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That can cause that nice beige yeah. color. Mm -hmm. This is a bark of an avocado tree and it will Achote. be orange. Yeah, the light blue comes from something called saca tinta. All the colors are a bit like of a dull, like none of them are super bright, but they're really rich and deep. So the next step is usually drying it. But typically we'll hang it in shade and let it dry over a few day period because if you put it in hot sun, it will change the color more. Even sure. the phases of the moon have a large effect on the color. Full moon creates a more rich color. It's hung in shade for a full moon or can it be in the direct moonlight or is it less about the light and just more about the, the gravitational, gravitational pull. pull. It's more like an energy. It doesn't uh, really need to be like in the light. The first step is choosing what colors mm -hmm. you want to use. As you can see in that pink bag, those are the all the unwound mm -hmm. yarn. This is the first process of backstrap blue weaving. There are three processes. This one in Spanish is called a debanadera. As you can see, it's a wooden structure. They take two skeins of same colored or different colored yarns because they want to make a double thread. So they have a more durable thread that they can weave with and it won't break as easily. And then as you you can see she's rolling it. Um, usually they use a piece of corn husk or a little piece of newspaper in the middle to start the ball and then they start wrapping. This is the second process, it's called an ordidor. So this is all about pattern making. So in this process there's a few things that they're deciding. The length of the weaving, they're okay. going to decide the width and they'll decide the order and pattern of the colors that they're going to include. The length which is called the warp in English, is determined by how many pegs she decides to incorporate in this structure. So right now, as you can see, she's using four pegs. This will be a shorter in length weaving. She could continue to go all the way around and, and incorporate more pegs, the longer it will be, up to oh. about a meter. Also, she's determining the width. That's because she is gonna choose how many times that she continues to wrap this string around these pegs, and then this will be the width of the weaving. And as you can see, she's choosing the order of the colors which will create the pattern. And she was talking about the what they call the corazón, the heart of weaving, which are these crosses right here. These are extremely important. If you don't do these crosses correctly, you mess up your entire weaving. So you have to be very careful. The reason is, is 
the backstrap loom needs these crosses in order to put the wooden pallets in that will create the backstrap loom. So. Okay. So I started it a few weeks ago and then we took a break to take on some other projects with the Christmas season coming up. How long did it take you to get this section done here? It takes probably about three or four hours. And then when it comes to this, the weaving instructor will set up the loom for you. I and mean, that took probably about another hour of just wrapping. The way that she set up this loom, she took the oh, threads as you saw before, yeah. and she stuck the wooden pallets through different parts of the weaving. This is called the apiadora or the heddle in English. So that is the most important part, it's the creator of the weaving. So that's the part that she lifts it up here in order to create this cross, which is the cross that we saw before. She's explaining that there are two parts to the thread of a weaving. There's the warp and the weft in English. The weft is this yellow stick she has right here. In Spanish, it's the trauma, which is why we're called trauma textiles. Oh. They also use the metaphor of it's, it's the food of the loom. So she's feeding this weft through the loom, and that's what's creating the weaving. She's passing the weft through, and then she is pulling the warp strings down to seal mm. in the weft string. Mm. She's making a soft scarf right now. If she wove the whole thing normally, it would be a little bit brittle. The material would be hard to like wrap around your neck. So she's sticking this metal string through so she won't weave those strings, so it'll oh. stay loose. This is the same process that they say make a table runner. So you don't want your scarf to be like, say, as thick and as brittle as a right, table runner. Right. You want it to be a little bit more soft, a little bit more bendable. Well, you don't have her knee. Also hurt. No, I don't. <laughs> I cannot with my knee. You put it down by the Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's all about body weight and tension. That's how the loom functions. And go in here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And set that there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm still Push that down there. Mm -hmm. Use your mm -hmm. left hand in the middle and pull it up. Mm -hmm. And your right hand will have to pass mm -hmm. that through. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pop it up. Yes. Yeah, you're good, and then you seal it down. You know? Down. Oh, <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. Pull that one through, yeah. And then just set it down right there, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you push that in place. See how it's pushing the screen, uh, or the string. screen <laughs> tight? Yeah. Wow. Okay. And then. No, not yet with that one. Then see what she's doing? You pull that up and then you push the wood. No, 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 no. no. Through the. Yeah, all the way through. Uh, pull it tighter. And pull, see how you pushed it into place? It's definitely interesting. You want a real experience. Come to Guatemala and learn backstrap weaving. Textiles. Link the love. Our products include symbolism and patterns that come from the indigenous cultures here. Trajes are unique to each pueblo and each region. Each traje, you can see, has kind of three main elements. So it has the huipil, the corte, and the faja. They can tell the difference between how old a huipil is, even though it might look identical to us. Basically, if like the small birds embroidered have open wings or closed wings, or if the three birds are facing in the same direction or in different directions. Kind of like all of the really small details, like in each one is completely done, woven by hand. How many hours would it take to, to make an months. outfit? Months. <laughs> How many months? Um, yeah, so for example, Harry bought this pair of pants that were part of a men's traje set, and when we asked about how long it took them to make it, they were like two years. It's every day they sit down and work on it, and if you talk to the younger girls who are getting into it, like 13, 14, um, they're also very proud and they also really see it as an art form. So right now we have complete sets of trajes online, Nabach and San Juan Cotzal available, and as for other trajes, we're able to source them through our custom orders page, but we're selling them for 384 US dollars. We make these nice like kimonos that are made out of the corte skirts that we saw. Oh, okay. So we cut them up and we tailor them into cool kimonos that you can wear. These are also naturally dyed with hospice, so we make bags as well. Belts for women and men that we make as well, and this is all also hand weaving. We make rugs as well. They come from Momo Stenango, and they're pure wool, hand spun wool. Oh my. Any questions about this? Yeah, any questions about this? No, it's so fascinating. Yeah. It's like learning history that's still in today's world. History and art. We are very grateful that you guys came. One of our main pillars is, is spreading cultural awareness around the world about Guatemala and, and their roots, so it really is important to us that more people are learning about it. So thank you guys for helping with that. Well, yeah. thanks for having yeah. us. Yeah. Muchas gracias. It's, it's been fun learning Guatemala, because it is definitely an adventure. 
Yes, muy divertido aquí en Guatemala, es una aventura. <laughs> Ellos ya subieron pacaya y oh, fueron a flores, tica, okay. Rio Dulce, Dulce. <laughs> Coban, uh, todas esas partes. Yeah. Yeah. Bueno. <laughs> yeah, a lot more to go. <laughs> yeah. We want to thank you guys for watching our video all the way to the end. If you would, hit that subscribe button, share it with a friend. And like always, thank you for living life.